Good afternoon, everyone. This presentation is titled Reimagining Sakai's Tools Offerings and will be presented by Sean Foster and Michael Green. Sean is an e-learning technology specialist at Western University. He works with Western's local Sakai-focused developers, e-learning teams, and central technology support teams to further enhance online and blended learning at Western. Sean has been involved in the Sakai community since 2011. He regularly attends community calls, contributes development and user, and user interface improvements and collaborates with other members of the Sakai community from both development and e-learning perspectives. Michael is the Associate Director for Learning Technology Services and Strategy at Duke Learning Innovation. Before joining Duke at Learning Innovation, Michael held an Assistant Professor of IT position at Rappahannock Community College, delivering high quality and engaging courses in information literacy and web design while building his understanding of IT service and team management. Before that, he built a portfolio of web websites and services and honed his design sense as the college web solution specialist. Please remember to mute yourself when you're not speaking to avoid distracting background noise. We have the room to set to mute participants on entry, but you can unmute yourselves in order to speak or ask a question. Just be sure to double check and, and mute yourself afterwards. Also, we ask that you please leave your webcam turned off unless you're speaking. If you have any questions, enter them into the chat and we'll answer them um, during the presentation or afterwards, depending on uh, how Sean and, and Mike want to handle that. This session is be being recorded and will be available at a later date on the Sakai YouTube channel. If you have any problems with uh, the video or audio, enter a comment in the chat box. And with that, I'll hand it over to you. Great. Thanks so much, Kenny. Appreciate it. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, as we said, we're going to be having a little discussion about reimagining Sakai's tool offerings. So uh, just a quick overview of what we're going to talk about today. Um, I, I, I want to just keep this really open conversational style. Uh, we're going to be doing a think pair share activity in a moment here. And uh, we're really doing blue sky thinking here. So don't don't try to constrain yourselves with anything. We're, we're just trying to keep our minds open and and really think about all the different possibilities that we could do for Sakai. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at um, the list of tools that we have in Sakai right now and, uh, and seeing what changes we might want to make if, uh, if we had the ability to do that. So let's consider the goals that teachers and students hope to accomplish in their classroom when we're thinking about our work today in this activity. And uh, here are some of the questions that you can think about uh, while you're making your decision about any given tool. Um, what we're going to be looking at is we're going to be going through each tool and, and asking ourselves these questions. Uh, do we have any duplication or redundancies in these tools? Are there any needs or opportunities in our list? Are there opportunities for, for new tools maybe or a mix of, new, uh, of existing tools combined into a new tool? And uh, could, Or could they just be grouped together or reorganized differently overall? And so what we're going to be asking you today is what changes would you make? So as I alluded to earlier, we're going to be doing the think, pair, share um, uh, process for that. And so what we're going to start off with is 10 minutes of independent think. And we have a spreadsheet that we'll show in just a moment that uh, each of you will have your own sheet. You have a list of the existing uh, tools in Sakai. And what we're going to ask you to do is go through the list and to select one of the options. And so. We want you to um, ask yourself, how would you reimagine Sakai's tool list by putting each tool into one of the ca three categories? And the categories are keep, change, and remove. So if you want to keep the tool, you think that it, if you think of, that it maps well to the teaching and learning goals, then, then that's great. Uh, you can uh, select keep or keep as, and that uh, will keep it as is. Or maybe you want to change something. So you might want to split it into multiple tools or merge it uh, with other tools. So you would select change. Or maybe you think that this tool isn't needed anymore and you want to remove it completely. So you could select remove. And for each tool, there is an option area for you to uh, add justification, description, or comment based on maybe uh, ex explaining a little bit more about why you chose each option. So in a moment, I'm going to give you a link 
to our spreadsheet and you'll go and you'll find your sheet sheet and you will uh, select one of the options that I uh, listed just above there and uh, add a comment to explain any details. So those, it's, um, that would be our process for today. And then after we've done this independently, uh, as I said, we'll, we'll give you about 10 minutes to do it. Then uh, we'll uh, put you into breakout rooms as probably pairs or trios. And then you'll be able to discuss um, your, your list with the others in your group um, on a new sheet and compare any differences, discuss any of those differences, and then we'll bring that back at the end for our share part of the exercise um, and discuss it as a group, um, which uh, any differences or, or big changes, and uh, hopefully by the end we'll have kind of a rough idea of any major uh, new ideas. So really keep your mind open, think um, through um, all different ways that you might uh, want to re-envision the list for Sakai tools. I'm just going to switch over here for a moment to our sheet. Sean, uh, Tiffany had a question that said for change, does that also mean improvements to the UI or would I put that in P? Um, can you elaborate a little bit on that, Tiffany? Um, do you just mean like... Um, so, so the example I'm thinking of is Samago, uh, where I would like to make drastic improvements to its usability, but I think it maps well to learning goals and covers a lot of use cases. Yeah, so you would put that as a keep because you're keeping the tool. Uh, so yeah, this isn't covering like uh, any redesigns to a particular tool. This is more like uh, thinking of the tool holistically and, and thinking about whether it, it is good in its its current form, not necessarily perfect, but it, um, it works. Um, as, an, uh, as a concept of that tool. And then um, if there's pieces of it that you think would work better in another tool, that's where you would might use change. Hopefully that's clear. Okay, thanks. That, that makes sense. But thank you for asking. That's a good way to clarify. So uh, here's a, um, a view of our spreadsheet. Uh, at the bottom, you can see that we have a number of think tabs or think sheets. And each one should have your name on it now. Uh, thank you, Michael. He's been going through and, and adding your names to the each sheet. So just scroll over if you can't find yours. Uh, but stay in the think sheets for now. We do have some uh, sheets further to the right, but we'll just start with the think sheets for now. So find your think sheet. I will put the link in the chat there so that you can jump into the sheet. Everybody should have the ability to edit it. And uh, so find the, your sheet at the bottom. And then, uh, as I said in the description, what you'll do is you'll go down the list of tools. So here's the existing list of tools. And there's a little drop down. You can select one of our three options. And then there's also the justification area that you can put there. And if you can't find the sheet that you're looking for, just let Michael or I know, and we'll try to find that for you. So we'll give you 10 minutes now to go through that list. And if when you are finished, if what you could do is click on your name in the big blue button and set your status to thumbs up, that will let us know that you're all ready or you're all done. It's not a race, got 10 minutes, so go. <laughs> and I'll put up that other sheet, um, the slide that I had before uh, with the We'll give you about two more minutes. And when you're done, if you can just click on your name in big blue button and set your status to a thumbs up, just to let us know that you're done. Those who have two minutes left. Okay, we're almost uh, at the end here. We'll give you about 30 more seconds just to finish up the last few tools. us a thumbs up and big blue button by just clicking on your name and setting status to the thumbs up. Okay. So thank you guys for doing that. That was the first part of our think share pair or think pair share uh, activity today uh, to independently think about uh, the tools in your list. Don't worry if you haven't quite finished them up. Um, you can finish them up in a moment or you can keep working on them while I explain the next part. Um, 
So now we're going to go on to the pair part of Think Pair Share. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, put you into breakout rooms of two or three people. I think we have a kind of an odd number here, so we'll group you in into either two or three. And uh, Michael's creating sheets for you at the moment that uh, will be numbered. And uh, this time, what we want you to do is to copy your list. So this is the keep, change, remove column from your uh, current think share or think sheet. Uh, you'll copy that uh, your answers to each of your tools, the ones that you selected, over to your new pair list, and you'll see that there'll be a column. And I'll show you in just a moment. There'll be a column um, for uh, person one and person two, and uh, then you'll have the two lists next uh, next to each other, uh, yours and your partner's. And what we want you to do is to compare the lists by discussing what are your most significant differences between your two lists, and uh, and and just discuss why you chose the options that you did. So let me just switch over to the spreadsheet here. And uh, so what you'll do is at the bottom, you'll see that you scroll past all the think ones and you'll get into the, a lot of think ones, into the pair list. And uh, each pair list will have three columns, person one, person two, person three. So what we would like you to do is to copy your, uh, your, your list of those three options, keep, remove, and change, into your uh, column. So you just pick one. And then you'll uh, you'll um, discuss the three columns with your partner, putting comments, justification, description in there as necessary. And then hopefully by the end of it, um, after your discussion, you'll be able to come to a consensus on most of the tools um, and you'll be able to select uh, those three options again in the pairs dis the discussion column, okay? So uh, if there are a few tools that you, you quite, haven't quite decided on or, or um, come to an agreement, that's no problem. Just put a little comment and we'll discuss those in the final uh, part of our section. So uh, I will switch back over to our instructions for that. So copy your list, discuss, and make a new list. And we will put you into breakout rooms. So. I'm going to create, let's see, we have about 24 people here. So I think I will create about eight rooms. And the room number will be the pair number that you'll go to in the sheet, okay? I'm gonna create rooms. And this time you'll have 15 minutes because a little bit more to discuss. And Let us know uh, if you have any questions. So here we go. Hi, everybody, and welcome back from your breakout rooms. Uh, hopefully you had some good discussions. I know it was a kind of a limited amount of time, but hopefully you were able to discuss a few of the, the key differences that you had um, in your lists. Uh, I know that some groups were uh, having very different uh, lists. So they probably had quite different conversations than other groups, but uh, thanks everybody for having that discussion. So we're gonna go on to the last part of our think pair share activity today, and that's the share part. And uh, at, this is uh, looking at um, our lists now as a group and uh, seeing what the most significant changes might be. I'd also like to hear from you if there are uh, tools that you couldn't agree on or tools that you're really excited about the change that you're proposing. So uh, let me just switch over to my other window and, and uh, the last far, far most sheet is called group. And in this one, what we've done is we've totaled up all of the columns that you have in your pair sheets uh, in that final column, the H column, and have put together this list of kind of an overview of what your decisions were. So you can see the darker the, the color, um, the higher the number uh, for those. So um, I thought what we'd do is just do a quick overview of this first, and then we would uh, open it up to any 
points that anybody wanted to make about their own lists or their own discussions that they had uh, with their pairs. So uh, let's see, we have announcements is pretty high, external tool and gradebook and lessons. Oh, I missed dashboard and assignments. Overview, resources, rubrics, tests and quizzes and help. So they all are pretty high on the keep pile. Um, so we have some other ones here. We've got a lot for changing in calendar, commons, and conversation. So are there any groups that want to elaborate on that particular point that they made uh, about changing one of those three tools? Do you have any ideas, thoughts? Either unmute yourself or um, in the chat. We said it could be combined with either the overview tool or the dashboard tool. Which tool was that? Sorry, Marty. That the calendar tool. Calendar. Okay. Combine with overview or dashboard. Okay. I think I saw a hand up here. Was it Matt's hand? I'd have a question. Oh no. Okay. Let's put it in the chat. Calendar. All of our institutions have productivity suites. All of our users have smartphones. This calendar does not integrate with them. At, or at best integrate in an unsatisfactory way. Sorry, can't talk. Um, yeah, so you're looking, uh, Matt, at changing it to integrate with some of those other suites? Is that maybe what you're proposing there? Something like that. Uh, and perhaps it's, it's lack of use, is it's competition that it's not uh, integrating with? Can you elaborate on that last part? Uh, um, with uh, so many institutions, as I mentioned, having uh, team sites, uh, G Suite sites, all that stuff, and there being a calendar there too, um, and then having have a personal calendar. Uh, amongst all of that, the Sakai calendar, which integrates from the rest of the, of the site, um, tends to keep that information in the site. If it had ways to um, probably get onto those smartphones and the places, that would be a big enhancement. But it sometimes can get lost in all the competing options. Okay. So you're not yeah. you're not promoting removing it then, are you, Matt? Or, or are you? Uh, I heard uh, I think Tiffany's voice, uh, but uh, I'll leave it that um, there's the tool, and then there's the responsibility of communicating dates and other date related information in the site. And uh, I don't think we have enough time to dive into which is which and which is important. Okay. Uh, Tiffany, did you have something? Yeah, I mean, our, our instructors um, really want a tighter integration with things like Outlook, which are, you know, is available uh, to instructors at a, um, at a university level. So, if they were able to, you know, immediately have a seamless integration with, um, you know, both Outlook and Google Calendar, uh, then that would make it much more useful to them. Um, the other thing that I've noticed in evaluating some other LMSs is, is that the calendaring um, integration with other tools is significantly better. Um, like, for example, the ability to change a due date from either the assignments tool or the calendar tool for an assignment, um, that sort of talk back between the two tools would be really helpful. Gotcha, great. Uh, what would we call that? Uh, better um, communication between calendar and other dates, and or dates and other tools. Yeah, because right now, if you if you push a date out of say assignments or tests and quizzes, it sent it posts it to the calendar, but it doesn't update it automatically if you make a change to that assignment or right. assessment or what have you. So being able and, to go both um, ways, back and forth. Yeah, and also the being able to go both ways, because that was something I thought was really neat in like Brightspace was where you could go into the calendar and modify dates, and it would adjust all of the assignments that you were you know editing just via the calendar. Thanks. Great. Thank you. And I've tried to capture some of the points that are in the chat as well. Um, we'll move on to the other tools. So commons or conversations, 
or podcast look like be the next top three oh and discussions any anybody want to talk about that john says merge chat room and comments okay A plus one for Matt about that. We've got merge conversations, comments, and discussions. Okay. So kind of having a communication tool almost of all these group together. Interesting. We said to get rid of chat room altogether because there's third party tools out there now that every university seems to have adopted at least one of them that does it a lot better. Zoom, Teams, what have you. Um, so get rid of chat room. Uh, could you also use Slack for that and then combine conversations, discussions, and comments or kind of asynchronous discussion? Okay. Anybody else? We've gotten a lot of feedback from instructors that they want um, discussions to be more like modern um, sort of discussion tools, like forums that you find online. Um, they'd like more social media like functionality, such as, you know, upvotes or likes or what, whatever. Um, I put Dis Discord in the chat. Is that kind of what you're thinking, Tiffany? Um, so they've mentioned that, but they've also mentioned, um, yeah, things like Slack or Discord, uh, but but just having it be more, oh gosh, see, because Slack and Discord are more chat-based, not, not necessarily um, something that you'd want to have it in, in organized segments. So they might still want some organization of threaded discussions, which is not necessarily what you get with with a, a Slack, but um, so maybe more like Reddit, as they're saying in the chat. Yeah, yeah, something okay. more like Reddit. Yeah, great, thanks. And also, easy way to um, embed and upload materials. So, like, they want to embed an image or a video directly in the post uh, without having to add it as an attachment, which then the student has to open in a separate window and all of that. Uh, what about podcasts? We had a couple for change or remove podcasts. Anybody want to talk about that? Josh, you raised your hand. Go for it. Yeah, hi. I just wanted to bring that up because that was something we've actually had a discussion about. Okay. Uh, we use a third-party platform, Panapto, if anyone's familiar, and it has a podcast capability. It's We already have it integrated into Sakai. It doesn't require file upload. It can require file uploads, but also it can be self-recorded through the UI itself. So, and also in our ever ever going quest to conserve space, um, I found it's the uh, podcast tool, although great, you know, there are better options for institutions who can, who can, can use third parties. Great, thanks, Josh. So we do have Panopto, but one of the big problems that users have with it is that you have to click on the tool in the tool menu to authenticate. And that's that's really a bad um, oh, they, usability problem. Yeah. Yeah, we're there with you, believe me. And Panapto, they keep saying they're working on a uh, working away at this passing the roster through. Uh, so we don't, because we're always fighting with students and instructors telling them, you got to click on the Panapto tool to access everything in the folder for that semester. Yeah. I'm, we're with you, Tiffany. We're with you. Yeah. You got solidarity in Baltimore. <laughs> it is. <laughs> nice. You could have a voice read too. <laughs> We Thanks. should get together and uh, petition for Panopto to fix that. I'll make the placards if you bring bring the booze. <laughs> I see that we're at the at, at the end of our time here today, and, and I want these con uh, conversations to continue. So feel free to continue them in the forums area of the um, of these uh, conference site.
uh, for this or uh, contact each other. Uh, but I also want you to uh, take um, take an idea from, from this exercise and, and maybe think about conducting it at your own institution with faculty and students. Um, and, and see what their opinions are and maybe give them a bit more time. We're kind of limited today about uh, for time from the workshop, but uh, um, yeah, we'd be interested to hear uh, what your thoughts are um, from your own institution. So uh, if you want to share that with Michael and I, uh, we'd be happy to look at that. And so this whole exercise kind of came out of us discussing um, the future of Sakai, especially with the Trinity project and the new Sakai UI and uh, what types of, uh, as we're updating those pages and those tools, whether there should, could be functionality that is merged or split or um, that together. So um, it'll be really interesting to continue this conversation in the community as we move forward and uh, redefine Sakai and the list of tools. So I hope this was kind of interesting uh, start of that discussion. And uh, thank you so much for your participation in the breakout rooms and uh, discussing it with each other. And I hope that you had uh, a little bit of fun today. And uh, thanks and feel free to uh, share any feedback with us. So thank you very much for attending and hope you enjoy the rest of your day today. Thanks guys. Pause the recording there. Um,